government must continue in its efforts to serve the people by providing amenities. President Buhari doubles down on corruption in public sector, promises tough times for culprits. One of the greatest achievements of the administration in 2021, and indeed in the past seven decades, was recorded in the oil and gas sector. Federal government scores self high on performance in 2021. Any attempt to hide a number or make it unknown or change the number or make an international call to appear as a local call will immediately be addressed. NTA reviews ongoing efforts to deploy key technologies to end cyber crimes and related offenses. Good evening. This is NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Michael Olale is in Lagos and Obehi Otobo joins us from Benin. Welcome. Well, not mincing his words, President Mohamed Buhari has vowed to ensure that every Kobo mismanaged or diverted during what he called the serial abuse of the Niger Delta Development Commission is recovered for use in service of the people in the region. While performing a virtual inauguration of the NDDC prototype hostel at the University of Uyo, the president said all those found culpable would face the law. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the report. This ultra modern complex, built and donated to the University of Uyo by NDDC, renews our confidence that the forensic audit, which has been completed, and currently being reviewed for necessary action had achieved one of its core objectives. The objective of the forensic audit, President Muhammad Buhari said, is to rebuild the NDDC into an agency that is well equipped and better placed to facilitate sustainable regional development in a transparent and impactful way. The federal government has invested significantly in the NDDC. We recognize that this outlay of resources must be justified. And this can be done only with verifiable projects, prudently and efficiently implemented, which will improve the living standards of the people. It is critical that not only I, but the people begin to rekindle our trust in this critical institution, which plays an important role in developing this region. This fully furnished prototype university hostel consists of 1,050 bed spaces, 525 each for males and females. It can also boast of significant hard and soft infrastructure towards ensuring sustainability and durability. The completion of this structure is therefore another important proof that this administration is committed to satisfying the needs of the people throughout Nigeria and fulfilling their expectations. Governments must continue in its efforts to serve the people by providing amenities as well as of the environment and the overall growth of the economy. The NDDC, President Buhari said, needs to continually demonstrate that it can achieve the objectives it was conceived for and make its impact felt across the Niger Delta. The lives of the people of the Niger Delta could be so much better if the funding received by this commission since its inception in billions of Naira over the last 20 years had been judicially deployed in service of the people. The serial abuse, lack of delivery, and what had become an entrenched institutional decay was the reason why I called for the forensic audit. The president charged the management of the University of Uyo to ensure that the hostel block is properly maintained for the benefit of the current students as well as those who will come after.
from the state house Adam Musambo and News. In the meantime, former President Goodluck Jonathan and the governor of Abia State, Okeze Ikweazu, were guests at the presidential villa today. State House correspondent Adam Musambu also has more on that. <laughs> this is the second time the former Nigerian leader is visiting President Muhammadu Buhari in the last three months. Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan is currently the special envoy and mediator of the economic community of West African states ECOWAS to Mali. ECOWAS had during its 60th ordinary session of the authority of heads of state and government vowed to impose additional economic and financial sanctions on Mali if by the end of this month no concrete progress is made in preparation for elections. Former President Goodluck Jonathan, who has been leading mediation talks with Malian authorities, is here to perhaps brief President Muhammad Buhari on his efforts at safeguarding democratic order in the West African nation. Details of their meeting held behind closed doors for about 30 minutes were not made public. Meanwhile, the president also granted audience to the governor of Abia State, Okezie Ikazu. Their meeting, similarly held behind closed doors, centered on developments in the God's own state and indeed the southeast region. We like the redevelopment of the airport at Enugu, and we think that there must be a purpose for which the president allowed that redevelopment and investment in that airport, which, to my mind, is to create a gateway. Uh, to the outside world from Enugu. Um, that is one. Two, everybody knows about the, the, the second Niger Bridge. Uh, that has never been done before, and we think that um, uh, we, we need to encourage the president to complete that project quickly within his time and hand it over to our people. If you experience the log jam at the Onesha Head Bridge and how it impacts negatively on the economy of Anambra and Delta and the entire Southeast, then you'll be able to project into what it will uh, tell, assuming we have that uh, bridge in place. The governor also brought the president up to speed about the Enyimba Economic City, a futuristic project jointly funded by the federal and state governments as well as the private sector. Enyimba Economic City is indeed the hope of Nigeria to play strong in the Continental Free Trade Agreement in Africa. It is also the hope for Nigeria to provide 625,000 jobs for our Timi youths. Our desire is to ensure that sometime next year, very soon, we'll be able to invite Mr. President to come and do the groundbreaking for that transgenerational project uh, as one of his legacies in government. And there's a law uh, from the Abia State House of Assembly endorsed by my humble self which gives it that quasi-independence and autonomy to operate. And um, there are interests within and outside Nigeria also on that project. Uh, I would want to say that um, the best thing for us to do is to wait uh, at the dining table. We are in the kitchen now. Uh, the food will be ready very soon. Governor Ikeazu made a case for Nigerians to give the necessary support to President Muhammad Buhari in his genuine efforts at bequeathing enduring legacies for posterity. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has called the federal government high in its performance in 2021, explaining that the assessment is credible owing to the global effects of COVID-19 dwindling resources and the issue of insecurity. The minister stated this at a media briefing in Lagos. Anthony Forsen reports. We have called to brief you on the achievements of the Buhari administration in 2021. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed presenting the federal government's scorecard for the year 2021. Acknowledging the challenges, he said infrastructure remained top priority, with the second Niger Bridge hitting 78% completion, with no fewer than 2,676 households benefiting from the federal government's 5,000 Naira cash transfers every month. 
the armed forces, he pointed out, has recorded successes using a combination of kinetic and non-kinetic operations. Our biggest challenge in the outgoing year has been in the area of security. Despite the novelty of the challenges, however, our military has continued to live up to their billing. We owe them a debt of gratitude for their patriotism and sacrifice. In the oil and gas sector, the Mason noted the level of transparency that has been injected into the NNPC. The passage and signing into law of the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, is a landmark achievement. Many have described it as the most profound event in the Nigerian oil and gas space in the last 20 years. Giving a blow-by-blow -blow account on how the economy has fared, Lai Mohamed was specific. Posting of a whopping 27 billion profit after tax by the NNPC for the first time in 44 years that the corporation has recorded such a feat which the NMPC attributed to aggressive cost-cutting measures, cost savings through the negotiation of contracts by up to 30%, improved efficiency through business automation, emphasis on commercially focused investment, and non-interference in the management of the corporation. The Works and Housing Ministry, on its part, has executed roads, highways, and bridges across the country, saying some completed, others ongoing. The private sector, the minister said, is being carried along in the process. An area in which the present administration has distinguished itself is in the provision of key infrastructure. Aviation on its part has been strengthened to produce world-class avionics for the country, while water and sanitation witnessed about 159 projects constructed in the year under review. National Social Investment Program on the directive of President Muhammad Buhari was equally expanded from 500,000 to 1 million. Information and communication technology sector emerged a game changer in growing the nation's economy. The telecommunication sector alone recorded a growth rate of 15.9 percent, representing its highest growth rate in the last 10 years. Lion Mohammed, however, urged Nigerians not to relent in supporting the nation's security forces in their efforts and sacrifices to keep the country safe. In Lagos, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The Nigerian military has tasked top brass of the armed forces on strengthening operations in trouble zones across the country in order to flush out remnants of insurgents and other criminal syndicates. This came to the fore during the official commissioning of new ranks to deserving military officers in the country. Abu Bakr Akwanga reports. After the storm comes rain, this expression best describes the emergence of these new ranking military officers who have distinguished themselves and ready for the assignment of neutralizing criminals in different theaters of operations. And to walk the talk, 41 Brigadier Generals moved to the rank of Major General and 11 Colonel moved to the rank of Brigadier General from the Nigerian Army Wing why the Nigerian Navy received 21 officers to the rank of Rear Admiral. The Air Strikers welcomed 29 newly promoted officers to the rank of Air Vice Marshal, 31 Air Commodores, and 6 Flight Lieutenants. Minister of Defense and Service Chiefs called for enhanced synergy, urging the officers to justify the confidence reposed in them and work assiduously towards dousing tensions across trouble spots in the country. You must all come together to develop an enduring solution that will completely defeat and bring peace, uh, these challenges to an end. Peace brings up because we must, at all costs, take away every form of insecurity in Ireland. And I know, looking at your pedigree and what the reports that we received during the council meeting, you will live up to this challenge. Amongst the new ranks are two female, Air Commodore Alima Musa and Flight Lieutenant Josephine Akpabio of the Nigerian Air Force, 
who have served as gallant officers and ready to confront the nation's common enemies. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NTA News. Time for our first break now. The rest of the news continues shortly. <laughs> family plan. Get bonus talk time, SMS and data for each family member you share with. Dial star 141 hash now. Airtel, the smartphone network. Season's greetings from the Federal Road Safety Commission. The Federal Road Safety Co appreciates our road users and all other stakeholders for your cooperation. We believe road crashes are preventable, and our desire is to see reduced cases of road traffic crashes. Your life is precious to your family. This is a season of joy. Do not bring sorrows to your family. Road traffic injuries will cost you and your family emotional and financial strain. Obey all traffic rules. The personnel of the car on the roads to enforce compliance. Be patient, be awake, be sober on the road. Together, we must work to put in place measures to keep road safety on the agenda. Stay alert, stay alive. Wishing you a safe and prosperous year ahead. Season greetings to our road user partners. The car wishes you happy celebration and safe travels. The Federal Road Safety Commission is committed to creating a safer motoring environment. Dear friend, as 2021 ends, we share your gratitude for its blessings. We acknowledge your low moments too and wish you strength to carry through. At Bedmate, we'll keep making your living better because we believe that furniture is not just an item made of wood, glass, marble, or steel, but a symbol of your unity and good times with your loved ones. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year full of all the finest things you desire. For those wondering why Schweppes changes look, experience tells us. Change is inevitable. Schweppes, made with over 200 years of experience. Introducing an all-time mega offer. Get over 50% discount in the Airtel Home Broadband Mega Offer. Buy a router for just 10,000 Naira and get up to 240 gigabyte or a MiFi for 5,000 Naira and get up to 125 gigabyte bonus data. More data, more you. Reliable home broadband buy. Airtel, the smartphone network. I know that in the last decade, this country has been at different wars trying to keep the peace and promote the sovereignty and the integrity of the country. The troops are doing their best. The president has given them all the necessary tools. It is left for us as young people and as Nigerians to give them all the support we can. We say kudos to all our gallant military men. Please, whenever you see a police officer in or out of uniform, if you know them, clap for them whenever they need to. Give them seats in buses and trains and airplanes. Have the airline managers reduce air tickets for them or train tickets for them. Show them that we appreciate what they do and show their families that there is something right and honorable and truly remarkable about wearing a uniform and going into the bushes and the forest to fight enemies of this country that are hell-bent in bringing your life to an end. It's a very tough time, but we have to all put our hands together. Please support our troops and support our police officers. From the heart of the federal capital territory to the ancient city of Kano, from the sprawling rooftops of Ibadan to the bustling markets of Aba and the creeks of the Niger Delta, you, you really, really can't, can't beat, the beat the rich. Over the years, we have kept going, keeping you informed, educated, and entertained. And how have we survived in the very challenging year? Because of our pillars of support. Namely, the three tiers of government, ministries, departments, and agencies, corporate bodies and advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and most importantly, you, our esteemed viewers. viewers. 
Together, we made 2021 great. And together, we shall make 2022 greater. Thank, Thank you. you. From all of us here at NTA, your season's greetings and a prosperous new year. Thanks for staying with us. The police, in collaboration with the military, have rescued 10 persons, including a one-year-old baby kidnapped by bandits at Gada district in Bunguru local government area of Zamfara state. The rescued victims were among an unspecified number of people abducted by bandits when they invaded the community, invaded the community and killed five persons, including the district head of the area, Umaru Bawang Allah. A statement issued by the Public Relations Officer Zamfara State Police Command, Shehu Muhammad, says the joint tactical team, with the support of a vigilante group, was able to disperse the hoodlums and rescue the victims unhurt. The statement adds that normalcy has been restored to the area with improved patrol. In the meantime, the police tactical operatives have succeeded in arresting a 20-year-old infamous bandit, Sani Machi, who allegedly had been terrorizing communities in Birnam Magaji, Shinkafi, and Zurmi local government areas of Zamfara State. He was arrested while trying to block a road in the area with the intent to kidnap innocent commuters. Exhibits recovered from the suspect include one AK-47 rifle, double magazines with three rounds of live ammunition, and a boxer motorcycle, and he confessed to the crime. Similarly, five suspected drug traffickers have been arrested by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, with over 427 kilograms of illicit drugs. Among the suspects are three persons posing as security agents to escape scrutiny in Bama, Borno State, and the FCT. Loads of cannabis sativa and tramadol capsules were recovered from them. Also intercepted is a suspected bandit operating in Nanganacha town of Gasol, local government area of Taraba State, with two pistols and ammunition. Well, still on security, we know that efforts by the federal government to empower the military and other security agencies are yielding fruits with no noticeable gains being made in the war against insurgents and other criminal elements in uh, the country. However, in an attempt to make more gains, analysts say citizens and other critical players must key into national security efforts and the media is one of the key players. Now, legal practitioner Dr. Ulukayori Ajulo joins me to speak on the role of the media in Nigeria's democracy and national security. Uh, Dr. Ajulo, thanks for joining us on the news. Now, Hello, thank you very much. let's Good talk evening. about the it's balance between national security and press freedom in the context of the collective good being more important than the public's needs to know. Yeah, I agree with you. The, when, you when we talk about the roles of the media, it is so clear that media uh, ensure that build the nation, build the community. And that is why today, if kudos must be given to the media, being the fourth estate of the realm of trying to ensure the coercion. And when we talk of the national security, they have a greater, greater role to play because in disseminating the information, in trying to let the people to know what goes on, they need to be to be they need to ensure at all times that the security, particularly the national security, is 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 uphold at all times and to ensure that we still continue to have the nation. I say this from the point that today there's a provocation of social media. Many people put out different stories, some that by the time you look at it, the purpose of which is to ensure that the nation is disintegrated. And I believe it is the role of the media, like I said earlier, their duty is to co ensure coercion. Their okay. duty is to ensure unity. And okay. this can be done All in right. the way they play, particularly when it comes to security of okay. the nation. You delivered a paper quite recently, and uh, in it you noted that Nigeria is currently in dire straits. Uh, not only dialogue, constructive engagements, and an ampli amplification of... Uh, the shared humanity can reverse what you call the gloomy extinction that stares Nigerians in the face. Now, how true is that 
for us to understand and redress this reality? Well, uh, let's start from the fact that we need not discuss, deceive ourselves that there is a dear security situation in the, in the country. And we need to say this, that it is not only in Nigeria alone. It is more like a global phenomenon. We tracing what is happening in Sahel, the fall of Gaddafi in Libya, and again in, in, in Egypt, in Egypt, and you find that the, the backdrop is coming home to Nigeria and with different and its attendance, banditry and co. And with that, that one concerns constitute an issue. And you know, we have all these opportunist group that want to lap on, on that to cost me. And as it is, you can see that from all fronts, Nigeria seem Nigeria military is fighting and to ensure that Nigeria is at peace. And now the issue here is that is as we are in this dead need, there is a need of a way how our information is managed. Because if it is not well managed, okay. we may it more may be constituted. And I believe that is why All we right. need to fix that. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Dr. Ajula. Thanks, we have to leave it there. Thank you for being with us. I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Yeah. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of Deputy Controller General Karibu Samson as Acting Controller General of the Federal Fire Service. In a statement, the Acting Controller General called on officers and men of the service to maintain a high level of discipline with assurances of sustaining achievement recorded, which resulted in lifting the service to meet the fire safety standards. He said he appreciates the efforts of officers and men of the service, calling on them to give their maximum support to complement the successes recorded. The need to build a secure Nigeria through technology echoed dominantly during key activities in the ICT sector in 2021. Now, while reviewing the sector, experts suggest the need to deploy key technologies to address some security challenges which they say are stifling development. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson reports. Technology has proven to be immensely advanced in almost all fields of human endeavors. But the advancement comes with attendant problems. Cybercrime is top on the list. While some say cybercrime is the white elephant in the room, others are of the view that it is a necessary evil as far as cyberspace is concerned. The federal government on its part does not seem keen on sharing the nation's digital space with cybercriminals. But to contend with faceless or anonymous enemies, one needs to master the art of such engagements. That perhaps is the reason why the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy in 2021 made concerted efforts towards getting rid of cyber criminals by harping on NINSIM linkage, which the minister said will enable the federal government and security agencies to know the identity of internet users in the country and of course the recent federal executive council's approval for the immediate deployment of regulatory systems in the telecoms industry came through to cap it all up for the sector these two systems approved in a single memo will firstly significantly support our security institutions to the extent that any attempt to hide a number or make it unknown or change the number or make an international call to appear as a local call will immediately be addressed by the Nigerian Communications Commission on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria. Specifically, These experts argue that okay. with incidents of cyber crimes globally, structures like the regulatory systems put in place to address such threats need to be functional and funds judiciously utilized. Uh, we suggest a kind of distributed implementation so that even if you have a centralized coordinating center, maybe in the maybe in Abuja or elsewhere, then you can have centers distributed maybe in the geopolitical zones, then later you can spread it into states so that uh, any form of attack against people's mobile phone numbers or SIMs can easily be monitored, can easily be identified, can easily be tracked. They could have customized, secured equipment made for the Nigerian people. It is hoped that as more and more people get lifted out of poverty by the government, even more would be lifted out of arm's way as one deadly cyber attack 
can send a person, a group of people, or even a nation back to poverty. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. Meanwhile, government is scaling up access to technology and digital skills to improve teaching and learning for the youth to make them marketable in a fast-changing and digital economy. The Federal Ministry of Education inaugurated an e-learning portal developed at the advent of COVID-19 pandemic to bridge the gap created by the new normal to compel and accelerate strategies in alternative delivery of knowledge. And we felt by leveraging on technology, we'll be able to expand access. <coughs> because you will no longer be limited to the spaces available or the desk available in the classroom. From the comfort of your home, from the comfort of your workshop, your market shop, in the comfort of your own bedroom, when you go back from your daily chores at night, without limitations of time, classes are from 8 to 2. But when you are doing online, even at 2 a.m. when you wake up, you can access content and learn and also do your research. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, the ministry had a cloud project designed to provide a unified approach to e-learning. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has called on critical stakeholders in education to invest heavily in the sector so as to secure the future of the younger generation. The SGF was speaking during an inspection visit to Government Secondary School Hong, a school he graduated from 51 years ago. Ria Nubala reports. Established in the 1960s, Hong Secondary School, now Government Secondary School Hong, Adamao State, was neglected both in terms of infrastructure and facilities. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who inspected the classrooms, staff quarters, hostels, including the dormitory he stays during his secondary school days, expressed dismay that such a great school would be abandoned. He called on government at all levels and critical stakeholders to give utmost priority on education to safeguard the future of the younger generation and for the development of the country. The educational system in its entirety has suffered a lot of disruptions. It has not been funded adequately because there have been abdication of responsibilities. It has not been resourced in terms of manpower development. Uh, you see these facilities were constructed even before I came to this school. I was in the fourth set. So uh, we joined three other classes. It's still the same facility. During his visit to the school, Boss Mustafa also attended a reunion class session with his classmates of 1970 and issues on how to develop the school were discussed. In Eola, Rayan Ubala, NTA News. Michael in Lagos is next with other reports. Michael? Thank you, Cyril. Just like 2020, the Nigerian health sector in 2021 was dominated by issues surrounding the coronavirus pandemic. The country experienced two waves, the third and fourth surge. Hingino John tells us how the sector fared in the year under review and gives us projections of 2022. Amid increase in cases of COVID-19 infections in 2021, government intensified enlightenment campaigns on importance of vaccination and it is breaking barriers of vaccine inequality to provide Nigerians the opportunity to be fully inoculated. For instance, the Lagos state government flagged off the Count Me In 4 million Lagosians vaccinated against COVID-19 campaign to achieve herd immunity. We're going to recruit more and more private sector organizations into accreditation and providing them with these vaccines so they can administer these vaccines to the public. As the country battled the third wave of the pandemic, which came with a more aggressive variant, the Delta strain, resident doctors embarked on an industrial action which lasted 64 days. Few months after suspension of the strike, the federal government responded to part of their demands by approving an increase in hazard allowance. Despite challenges faced in 2021, the pandemic period also activated 
the scientific bravery of Nigerian researchers. Some of the resources that we use in HIV programming were also used for COVID testing. You know, we are still able to reach a good number of people. Other areas that recorded success include the fight against yellow and Lassa fevers with the invention of homegrown diagnostic kits by the country's Apex Medical Research Institute. The case of yellow fever and Lassa fever is everywhere in the, in the states. And uh, when it is not diagnosed early, most times people come down with high issue, even fatality. So we felt there is a need for us to have an in-country uh, diagnostic kit that can pick these uh, pathogens. Medical experts believe 2022 will bring more hope to the health sector. A health system that is robust enough to cope with everything in reproductive health, mental health, endemic diseases. As scientists and researchers in Nigeria and across the globe continue to struggle to find a more permanent solution to COVID-19, Nigerians are hopeful that things will get back to normal in 2022. In Lagos, Hinginu John, NTA News. Expectations remain integral aspects of human planning, whether social or economic. This is because they give room for a better tomorrow. Most people, particularly at the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, have such expectations. Lynn Neneke sought the opinion of some Nigerians on their expectations for the new year 2022 as year 2021 winds down. It has become an annual ritual for people to set agenda for themselves. So also it is with the government. As Nigeria continues to battle the deadly variant of COVID-19 and ensure the safety of citizens, it is also doubling efforts to improve every sector of the economy. With just few days to the end of 2021, some Nigerians who spoke to NTA News highlighted security, health as areas of expected improvement. They should try to go and encourage the youth to go into the agricultural sector so that it can create jobs for them, it can reduce our importation, which is import substitution. And through that, it can improve the Naira value. Gone are the days that even before you graduate from the school, you find several organizations that actually need your service. But this time around, it's done like that. So government just have to look at have to look at things from different perspectives, what they can do in order to make sure that people are more productive or probably they bring out the creativity in people. Some others also have their personal expectations for the new year. That God will eradicate the spreading of the COVID in our nation. To move closer to God. It is hoped that individuals and governments alike would consolidate on the gains of 2021 for a better year in 2022. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports shortly after this break. Please stay. <laughs> As 2021 ends, we share your gratitude for its blessings. We acknowledge your low moments too and wish you strength to carry through. At Bedmate, we'll keep making your living better because we believe that furniture is not just an item made of wood, glass, marble or steel, but a symbol of your unity and good times with your loved ones. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year full of all the finest things you desire.
Introducing the one gift for all this festive. Go TV Super. Enjoy more channels, more variety, more entertainment on Go TV Super. Go TV. Love it. African Cup of Nations starts on the 9th of January 2022 on NTA, powered by Afrosport. For sponsorship and advertisements, contact us on 090 9890 or 090 3513 And back in Abuja, Benny Adams brings us business. Benny? Thank you, Cyril, and welcome to business. We start by telling you that the federal government says the recovery of the economy remained on a steady path throughout the year 2021, as non-oil sector indicated better performance of 0.79% in quarter one, 6.74% in quarter two, and 5.44% in quarter three of 2021, compared to 1.55% in quarter one, minus six 0.05% in quarter two and minus 2.51% in quarter three of 2020, with total imports in the first three quarters of 2021 rising by 57.13% from 13.97 trillion naira in the corresponding quarters of 2020 to 21.95 trillion naira in 2021. Similarly, total exports grew by 40.62% which was 13.12 trillion naira in the first quarter of 2021, compared to 9.33 trillion naira in the corresponding period, an indication of improved trading activities, although a deficit position. And oil prices rose on Thursday to extend several consecutive days of gains, buoyed by data showing U.S. fuel demand holding up well, despite soaring Omicron infections. Brent crude futures rose 7 cents to $79.30 per barrel, climbing for a fourth day in a row. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 47 cents to $77.04 a barrel for a seventh straight session of gains. And is chairing news on the capital market as investors gain 3.22 billion naira as all share index inches up marginally by 0.01 percent to close at 41,813.27 basis points, while market capitalization stood at 21.3 trillion naira. 359.9 million shares valued at 1.8 billion naira exchanged hands in 3,607 deals. Market breadth closed positive as H markings led 20 gainers as against 12 losers, topped by FTN Coco at the end of today's session. The financial services sector had Jai's Bank, Axis, and Stalin Bank as the most active to boost market turnover, while Axis and NGX Group topped the market value list. That is a business news. Cyril, it's nice doing business with you. All right, same here, Benny. Expectations and high hopes in the vaccines developed to defeat the global pandemic in 2021 gave Nigeria and other countries of the world the boldness to analyze some current challenges and global partnerships with suggestions emerging on new directions and areas of cooperation. Foreign desk correspondent Usman Ali reports on how Nigeria and other nations made commitments to strengthen foreign relations for mutual benefit. America, Europe, Asia and Africa all seek for improved relations with Nigeria in 2021, signaling new reputation Nigeria builds in the eyes of the world. 
The campaign of America back mantra to rebuild relationship and redeem image against the insulting comments and restrictions such as the visa ban by Donald Trump to many countries including Nigeria brought two key figures of U.S. government. America's Deputy National Security Advisor and the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. There are no significant issues on our mutual agenda that can be addressed without working together, and, and so we are committed to continuing uh, to do that. The United States doesn't want to limit your partnerships with other countries. We want to make your partnerships with us even stronger. We don't want to make you choose we want to give you choices. Commentators say Blinken's coming to Nigeria will do a lot of healing, not only to Nigeria's desired aspirations, but the entire Africa continent. We have a country in the hands of a very strong leadership. There is morality in international relations. There is morality in politics. United States of America uh, if I didn't say the most important nation on earth is one of the most important nation on earth, every nation in the world will want to have a very strong uh, relationship at bilateral and at multilateral level with the USA. Nigeria and the United States government share interest in fighting terrorism and seeking for better guide to deal with insurgents in Lake Chad, for instance, and ISIS in other parts of the world. Recently, the A-29 Super Tucano planes and intelligence sharing are some of the benefits gained in the Nigeria and the United States friendship. But on the other side, despite Nigeria being a big trade partner of the U.S. in Africa, trade volume between the two countries is very low, and so both Biden and Buhari engage in various platforms to deepen business ties with turnaround initiatives to increase foreign direct investment, infrastructure development, and export. Before the pandemic, millions of donated vaccine doses have helped boost American influence. Therefore, the Blinken's visit is also seen to promote that generosity. And the increased U.S. engagement will also be sidetracked by growing crises that have consumed the State Department's attention. The worsening conflict in Ethiopia and derailed democratic transition in Sudan, Mali and Guinea, to which Nigeria has influence in the African Union and ECOWAS. Nigeria and the United Kingdom, as well as Europe relations, are emboldened with various engagements at different platforms and investment forums we see in 2021, just as Nigeria and Turkey closed the calendar with better ties in cooperation. This was before weighing projections for stronger development partnership between Nigeria and South Africa and the Burkina Faso government. Usman Aliu, NTA News. The year 2021 was not only good for Nigeria in the international arena, but was also largely good for the country's agricultural sector, as investments increased and growth remained largely positive. Now, in a bid to make Nigeria an agricultural commodity marketing hub, the federal government is supporting the development of agricultural commodities exchange, and one area hoping to take advantage of the initiative and grow its sector further is the cotton industry. Anibe Achimugu is the president of the National Cotton Association of Nigeria, and he joins me to discuss the prospects. Good evening. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. Happy to be here. Right. Now, uh, having come so far in cotton farming uh, with the CBN intervention facilitating the reopening of uh, most of the generies, at what point would cotton, textile, and garment cancel become necessary to further drive growth in the sector? Well, uh, that becomes necessary as we speak. As you are asking me, actually, that becomes very necessary to consolidate on the gains that we have uh, recorded uh, so far. And if I can reel out just a, a few uh, stats, uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, when we started, before the Ancoboras program, Nigeria was talking about 80,000 metric tons of uh, seed cotton today. We're talking on average of 150,000 metric tons. When we started under the uh, National Cutting Association of Nigeria, we were talking about 64,000 farmers. Today, we're talking well over 200,000 farmers, translating to over 200,000 hectares of uh, farmland. 
uh, we have improved yields from an average of 400, uh, 400, 500 kg per hectare, where today, as we speak, uh, 2021, and we're uh, harvesting as we speak, we have recorded 2.2 metric tons and upwards of 3.6 metric tons. Now, we all know that the import bill uh, of textile is well over $4 billion. This can be reversed, and this is something that we need to begin to look at and begin to consolidate on the gains of the Anchor Boros program under the Central Bank of Nigeria. And by the way, it's not only CBM. You also have also the NDAs. You have a Bank of Industry. You have uh, the banks, commercial uh, banks, right, right. bank, uh, Houston uh, Bank. Uh, you, you've reeled out some impressive statistics, but time now to bring out the crystal ball and uh, prospect in the future of the cotton sector in Nigeria in terms of value chain utilization. What do you see clearly and what is a bit blurry? Quickly. Well, quickly, I can tell you that uh, within five years, Nigeria should be able to be producing a minimum of one million metric tons of seed cotton. That translates to 500,000 um, hectares. Uh, we have it. Arable land is available. The farmers are there. And uh, two tons per hectare easily can translate to one uh, million tons. And if you do one million tons, one ton of cotton can generate upwards of five uh, uh, jo uh, job, uh, create five uh, uh, job opportunities. So we're talking about five All million. Right. So okay, I'm sure we'll have to leave it there. Uh, thanks so much, uh, uh, Adibi Achimugu, uh, president of the uh, National Cotton Farmers Association of Nigeria. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Time now to go over to Benin and link up with Obehi for more news. Obehi, it's over to you. Many thanks, Cyril, for joining us in Benin. Passengers using the Iwari Itakwe train services have expressed appreciation to the federal government for the free train services during the festive season. Austin Edemudu, who monitored the movement of passengers along the Iwari Itakwe route, reports that the situation has, however, resulted in congestion of passengers. At the Abo train station, Passengers are taking no chances as they wait anxiously to enjoy the free train ride declared by the federal government from the 24th of December to January 4th, 2022. Most of these passengers who are enjoying their first train experience are giving kudos to the government for this magnanimity. As I hear that the, our president declared free, I took opportunity to enter the train and I'm very, very happy, excited about it. The free train service, as we expect, means more passengers and less convenience as the train gets congested, with some settling for a space at the train's power cabin. Population of people need to enter the engine room so that they can be able to get to their destination. So that is just a little challenging. But the federal government, they have properly tried to offer this opportunity to, to, to us. It was a smooth ride anyway, but it was a crowded train. Why, of course, it was a free service for now, but it's okay, it's commendable. We hope that federal government will be magnanimous enough to give us another train. While the citizens support these palliative measures by the government, they expect more coaches to be available in subsequent times to contain the influx of passengers who will always take advantage of the free train ride. I'm Austin, a demo into your news. The National Gallery of Arts has continued to unravel the cultural values embedded in the Benin artistic tradition with an exhibition. The exhibition in Benin City is a tale of modern sculptures to complement this year's Igwe Festival. Urakobonga Chibong reports. The National Gallery of Arts, under the leadership of Ebeten Ivara, is back in Benin after its last visit. The urgency in the spirit of Igwe Festival is celebrating two outstanding artists, Princess Elizabeth Olowu and Prince Elise Erimona. Their tells is that of resilience and ingenuity in sculptural artworks, which stand them out in the field of visual art and as ambassadors of Benin Kingdom. Another great experience from National Gallery of Arts. A serious impression about Benin's arts. Fortunately, Prince Erimona was on ground to speak on his artistry and ingenuity. I had to study the clay thoroughly because I was hoping to transform, to transform the clay into all these metal works. 
So a younger generation will take the art as a serious business, as a, a, a vocation that will contribute to the wealth of the nation. For the National Gallery of Art, the artists blessed trails in different ways and deserve to be showcased. In Benin, Udwakobong Achibong, NTA News. And that's it from Benin. The news continues after this break. Me and you, let's get to Ghana. Hey! Right, jump ah! This is Ghana. You've come here to seek for greener pastures. Make it your worthwhile. Any guinea fowl is easy. Guinea. Guinea fowl? What is it? Guinea. It's just the name course. of the fowl. So, Ghana is a lot of Is it Nigerian beans? Uh, what? Have we made before? <laughs> no. Jasper! Help me! The 157 kilometer Lagos Ibadan Railway is the first double track standard gauge railway to be built in West Africa. The Mobalaji Johnson train station is a masterpiece, an infrastructure that is gradually becoming an iconic building in Lagos State. The modern facilities put the station on a world map of train stations. Likewise, all the new train stations across the country built to world-class standards. The train and its convenience is indeed an admirable effort with commendations from Nigerians. This is a station that we have to commend the federal government for putting a beautiful face, empowering us in Lagos State, not only in economic and uh, political arena, I can say that I'm really impressed with the infrastructures in place. Kudos to the Minister of Transportation, kudos to the federal government. Truly, good things are coming out of Nigeria, and the federal government is deserving of all the applause. The President General of the Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria, Dr. Ibrahim Dati Hamid, is dead. He died this morning in Kanu at the age of 83. He has been buried after funeral prayers held at Al Furqan Mosque in Kanu. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari mourns the renowned urologist and a doyen of private medical health care in Kanu, founder of Asma U Memorial Hospital, now renamed Abu Bakr Imam Urology Center in Kanu. In a tribute to the late Ibrahim Dutti Ahmed, who once ran as, ran as a presidential candidate, President Buhari described him as a man blessed with immense wisdom, who was a friend to the late head of state, General Murtala Muhammad. The president said, the nation is with the family of the late doctor, and the Kanu Emirate Council, as well as the government and people of the state, as they mourn the medical practitioner, politician, and religious leader and that concludes network news tonight the fight against rape and rapists is on be a part of it along with the nta that's it i'm cyril stover good night